Paprika. Ah, yes, another notable work by one of the most acclaimed names in Japanese animation, Satoshi Kon. But this isn't just any movie from his filmography. This is the final completed feature film by Kon before he unfortunately passed away of pancreatic cancer in 2010. Technically, he was going to do another movie afterwards called Dreaming Machine, but due to his death, on top of the lack of financing and that it would be next to impossible to find a filmmaker who could be as good as Khan, the project was ultimately abandoned with just 40% of the movie completed. But this is not about Dreaming Machine, this is about Paprika. And I'll just say right now that I'm only starting to get familiar with the works of Satoshi Khan. While I am quite aware that he loves to mess with people's minds with his movies, I've heard that this one is considered to be his most surrealistic work. So, as someone coming in fresh, I don't know what I'm about to get into, but no matter how it is, I think it'll for sure be 90 minutes of absolute craziness. So now that we're entering Satoshi Khan's dreamland, is the movie as revolutionary as the DC mini, or is this a nightmare in every possible way? Let's find out. The story. I have no idea what the fridge is going on. The animation. Nah, I'm just kidding. Let's actually get into the story. The one movie that has been brought up the most when related to Paprika is Christopher Nolan's 2010 feature, Inception. While there are no confirmations that this is the case, there are many claims that speculate Paprika being the inspiration for Inception, mainly due to how they share the main theme of dreams and the concept of having more than one person enter in that same dream. In Paprika, the way that it presents this is by fully examining the idea of what happens if there is a machine that can allow others to enter into someone else's dream. What would be the benefits that could help people? And what would happen if fallen in the wrong hands? It leans into the latter more so than the former for the sake of the plot, but the movie goes deep into the concept and explores all the different possibilities of what could happen, both in a way that can have audiences think if it would be beneficial to society, and for the writing to further advance the story and develop the characters along the way. On top of having that unpredictable edge to keep the viewer unsure if the characters are still dreaming or awake in reality. Speaking of the story itself, the best way to describe this is a psychological mystery, where the heads of the invention that allowed access to dreams, the DC Mini, is trying to figure out who stole one of those machines and is manipulating it to make others go insane. As a mystery, it is quite an engaging story that takes advantage of its dream concept, and thanks to its surreal and psychological nature, it makes the plot more unpredictable where it's tough to figure out who could be the culprit and what could possibly happen next, as well as a great fast pace to supply the feature with some action that keep the stakes high and the mood intense on how serious the situation is for not just the characters, but for the whole city. However, much like the DC Mini itself, there are a few things about the story that should have had more proper testing, and that is regarding the romance. I won't spoil anything, but some of the film's biggest answers are related to love with its main protagonist. Rather it be part of the cause or the solution to resolve everything, it feels like it came out of nowhere with little to no clues that it would head towards that direction and a bit of a cop-out just to quickly give the movie some form of a conclusion. Some could say it's just a minor nitpick. Well, maybe, but when it comes to a mystery movie like this, your story is as strong as your ending. And when you throw in love as part of your reason and your answer to take down the problem when you were mainly focused on the concept of dreams and how they affected the characters throughout, it ends up making the whole experience a bit questionable if it was all worth it just for a simple ending. But still, I do have to give credit to where credit is due, and while the end could have been better, 
The movie does have an intelligent and complex story that uses dreams in a way that both makes its audience think and keep them guessing. The Animation One thing I can say about its animation is that it likes to dream about a lot of things. Like, when it has a dream, it fills the screen with as many things as possible. And that is one thing to really admire from the movie's visuals, its ability to produce so much in a 90-minute film. Not only does it fill the screen with so many scenarios, people, and objects simultaneously, but it's also the amount of detail both in the designs and the movements that show how there was a ridiculous amount of work put into the animation. With the designs, they actually stay within the realm of reality. Sounds weird, but it's true that when we dream, we mostly view the real world from our perspective. Thus, the designs have to remain more down to earth to give the audiences more familiarity that the movie's reality is very similar to ours. But when it comes to the character animation, that's when there are mostly no rules, and it's what makes the picture visually unpredictable. Technically, there is still a majority of it that remains realistic with characters only limited to what the human body could let them move. But when it enters the dream realm, that's when it lets out any trick that it possibly knows. Bringing dolls to life, turning objects into rubbery cartoon characters, and lots of transformations and body warping. <laughs> But it's not just regarding the people that can make the dream surreal. This is also the case with the backgrounds where they can suddenly have no physics and warp into weird shapes or it can change locations in an instant, immediately switching the entire color palette and the tone of the area, but still keep that element of suspense of never knowing what will happen next on top of including its own amount of grand detail that could also make the location feel busy and even have their own stories to tell. And with the combination of these elements, they result in scenes that are both suspenseful and intense, perfectly capturing the mood of carrying its audience to understand what could go wrong with entering into other people's dreams, rather it be with its unsettling unpredictability or with its gripping action to show that dreams can still be a very dangerous place. Maybe it sounds corny to say that this animation is a dream, but it perfectly captures the visual aspects of a dream with its mix of carefully detailed reality and completely random surrealism. The Characters they may be the people behind the controversial invention, but most of these characters have their own good intentions of what they want to do with it and how they want to help people with their psychological problems. The movie's lead and the one trying to solve the mystery the most is Dr. Atsuko Chiba. In the real world, she is a stern psychiatrist who represses her emotions in order to get the job done. But when she's in a dream, she takes the form of her alter ego, Paprika, a bubbly and carefree girl who knows her way around the dream realm and understands its incomprehensible physics. <music> Along with Chiba is Dr. Torotaro Shima, the chief of staff that is good friends with just about everyone at the institute where they work and is the first victim to have someone affect his dream to the point of messing with his mentality, and Dr. Kosaku Tokita, where he may be an obese man-child, but he is also the inventor of the DC Mini and is through his kid-at-heart nature that led him to create the machine in order to help others and revolutionize the field of psychiatry. But the trio is obviously not alone in this case. There are still a good amount of others that either aid them to resolve the dream issue or hinder their goal to the point of making things complicated, and even the true villain does a great job in hiding their identity along with providing an interesting reason to destroy the bridge between dreams and reality. 
There's Detective Toshimi Konakawa that is a client of Chiba's that has a crush on Paprika and suffers from trauma from a recurring dream he has with a theme of movies, and the only way he could overcome his nightmare is by understanding more of his past and what do they have to do with movies. Then there's Dr. Shinjiro Inui, the chairman of the institute that is the most opposed to the DC Mini and is ready to pull the plug on the project entirely. And then there is Kei Himuro, Tokita's former friend and the main suspect who might have stolen the DC Mini. And because of how he and Tokita share the same interests of toys and a small theme park, he's the reason why dreams all have that recurring theme of a cluster of toys and living objects all having a parade. Again, due to the movie's ending with the sudden romance, that does also leave a bit of a bad taste towards the characters where some suddenly have this massive shift in their personality to supply a weak conclusion and ditch the goal of what they want to do with dreams and psychiatry just to suddenly make it about love. But can they still be good characters regardless? Of course! They're interesting, their personalities are unique, their psychologies give them a lot of depth, and they help make the movie believable in how they are capable of making you see them in your dreams. This is the kind of movie that some people may think it only exists in a dream, but I can assure you that it is real and it is quite beautiful. Paprika is an incredible animated achievement that is the perfect cinematic representation of a dream. It's unpredictably weird, it mixes the realm of realism and surrealism, and it's a crazy adventure from beginning to end. While it may suffer from a weak conclusion that nearly broke the movie, it still provided a lot of great quality with its thought-provoking writing that features an engaging story, a fascinating concept of exploring dreams, and believable characters that help give these ideas some credibility, and amazingly rich and detailed animation to help make those dreams an unforgettable sight to behold. This is definitely worth checking out for those who are into smarter and more mature movies, but I also recommend that if you want to fully understand the film, it might require more than just one viewing. With how complex the script can be, along with its fast pace and so much happening at once, it would be quite a challenge to understand everything it's telling you in one viewing. But then again, regardless of its difficulty to understand it all, it is worth it to watch it again because it is still a very solid film on its own and worth giving it the animat seal of approval. It sucks that he's gone, but Satoshi Kon's final feature is a wonderful highlight. Hey guys, this is Animat, and what a crazy movie it was. This is still a very good movie, but I think we can all agree that when it comes to Paprika, it is an absolutely wild ride. But now that we are all awake from that dream, it is now time that we shall go and move on to a Patreon request. And this time around, it's going to be from Gordon Rajani. So I would like to go and start things off by saying that if you guys would like to be like Gordon and you want to go and support my work and get some amazing rewards at the same time, including, but not limited, to uh, seeing my videos before anyone else, then all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash animat. But at the same time, if you guys would like to go and request an animated film you would like me to review and I would put onto the animation hat, then all you have to do is write me an email at animatsreviews at gmail.com. So with that said, what is it that Gordon asked me to go and do a review of? Well, for this one, we are going to be going from Japan to Denmark. Because when it comes to this intriguing little animated feature, we shall see that with this upcoming review, we are going to go and make you go a star.
抑圧された意識が表出するっていう意味ではネットも夢も似てると思わない<笑>